Animals, Animals by Eric Carl, part two. If a rooster crows when he goes to bed, he'll get up with rain on his head, weather saying. When a peacock loudly calls, then look out for rain and squalls, weather saying. What fun to be a hippo Potamus and weigh a ton from top to bottomus. Michael Flanders. The porcupine. A porcupine looks somewhat silly. He also is extremely quilly, and if he shoots a quill at you, run fast or you'll be quilly too. I would not want a porcupine to be my loving Valentine. Carla Kuskin. Mother doesn't want a dog. Mother doesn't want a dog. Mother says they smell. And never sit when you say sit, or even when you yell. And when you come home late at night and there is ice and snow, you have to go back out because the dumb dog has to go. Mother doesn't want a dog. Mother says they shed. And always let the strangers in and bark at friends instead. And do disgraceful things on rugs and track mud on the floor. And flop upon your bed at night and snore their doggy snore. Mother doesn't want a dog. She's making a mistake. Because more than a dog, I think, she will not want this snake. Judith Viorst. The flying squirrel. The flying squirrel is crazy. Though he has no feathers, much less wings, he scampers up into the tallest tree and cries, Toot toot, I'm a parachute. And away off the highest branches he springs, into empty air, spreading every hair, his arms and legs spread wide to the side, till he lands with a thump that's almost quiet. Admire it, child, but don't try it. John Gardner. The bird's nest. I know a place in the ivy on a tree where a bird's nest is and the eggs are three and the bird is brown and the eggs are blue and the twigs are old but the moss is new and I go quite near though I think I should have heard the sound of me watching if I had been a bird. John Drinkwater. Narwhal. Around their igloo fires with glee, the Eskimos tell tales of Narwhal. Listen and you'll see. This unicorn of whales through frosty waves off Greenland's coast majestically advance and like a knight come forth to joust. Hold high its wary lance. X.J. Kennedy. Enigma Sartorial. Consider the penguin, he's smart as can be, dressed in his dinner clothes, permanently. You never can tell when you see him about if he's just coming in or just going out. Lucy W. Rue. Yak. Yickety yakety yickety yak. The yak has a scriffly scraffly back. Some yaks are brown yaks and some yaks are black. Yickety yakety yickety yak. Sniggledy, sniggledy, sniggledy snag. The yak is all covered with shiggledy shag. He walks with a ziggledy, zaggledy zag. Sniggledy, snaggledy, sniggledy snag. Jack Prelutsky. The Pelican Chorus. King and queen of the pelicans we. No other birds so grand we see. None but we have feet like fins, with lovely leathery throats and chins. Ploffskin, pluffskin, pelican G, we think no birds are as happy as we. Plumpskin, plashkin, pelican Jill, 
We think so then, and we thought so still. Sparrow. A hummingbird hums, a jay finds fighting, pretty exciting, and licks every bird in sight. A woodpecker drums, a swallow swoops, in, up and down loops, and seldom lights on the ground. A gull is graceful in flight. But we take a sparrow, whose world is narrow. A sparrow just hangs around. A partridge whirs through the pines and firs, and an owl who hoos whenever it gives a hoot. A chickadee's ways are cute. A crow steals corn from the year it's born, then hides where it can't be found. A pigeon coos. A sparrow, though, doesn't come and go. A sparrow just hangs around. K. Starbird. The Eagle. The sun's rays lie along my wings and stretch beyond their tips. Papago Indian. I will not change my horse with any that treads. When I bestride him I soar. I am a hawk. He trots the air. The earth sings when he touches it. Shakespeare. Galloping pony alone against the moonlight on a whitened beach. Haiku. Kaiorai. Tiger. The tiger has swallowed a black sun. In his cold cage, he carries it still. Black flames flicker through his fur. Black rays roar from the centers of his eyes. Valerie Worth. The Barracuda. Slowly, slowly he cruises, and slowly, slowly he chooses. Which kind of fish he prefers to take this morning? Then, without warning, the Barracuda opens his jaws, teeth flashing, and with a horrible, horrible grinding and gnashing, devours a hundred poor creatures and feels no remorse. It's no wonder, of course, that he really ought, perhaps, to change his ways. But, as he says, with an evil grin, it's actually not my fault, you see. I've nothing to do with the tragedy. I open my mouth for a yawn, and, ah me, they all swim in. John Gardner. Electric Eel. Some think electric eel lacks looks. Some others find it stunning. A homegrown battery it packs to keep its shocker running. Why, you could light all New York streets and skyscrapers and stuff with one electric eel alone, if it were long enough. X.J. Kennedy. The face of the dragonfly is practically nothing but eyes. Haiku. Chisoku. Ah, discovery. On my frog's smooth green belly, there sits no button. Haiku, Yaku. Snail. Snail upon the wall. Have you got at all anything to tell about your shell? Only this, my child. When the wind is wild or when the sun is hot, it's all I've got. John Drinkwater. Roosters. Get out of my way, says Rooster One. I won't, says Rooster Two. You won't? I won't. You shall. I shan't. Cock, cock a doodle doo. They picked, they kicked, they fought for hours. There was a great to do. You're a far, very fine fighter, says Rooster One. You're right, says Rooster Two. Elizabeth Coatsworth. The Red Hen. She turned her head to the side. She turned her head to that, looking round for tidbits, juicy ones and fat. Scritchy scratch went Red Hen's feet. Nib knob went her bill. She ate of juicy tidbits until she had her fill. And then she flew into a nest and laid an egg. And then, with a cut, 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 cut a cut, flew off to eat again. James S. Tippett.
Rhinoceros. I often wonder whether the rhinoceros's leather is so bumpy on the inside as it is upon the skin side. Mary Ann Hoberman. Hurt no living things, ladybird nor butterfly, nor moth with dusty wing, nor cricket chirping cheerily, nor grasshopper so light of leap, nor dancing gnat or beetle flat, nor harmless worms that creep. Christina Rossetti.